everyone today it's uh, time to change the oil in the Corolla not as exciting as the Viper or the Mustang but uh, nevertheless it uh, needs to be done all right this is the uh, oil I'm using for the car uh, Toyota recommends for a lot of these newer newer Corollas you got to run a 020 which now more than ever is especially important having uh, cam phasers and high lift cams and these things it is important to use the proper weight oil so everything functions correctly um, one thing that is a lot different about uh, a lot of Japanese, also European cars, different from American, is this is the oil filter for it. This is called a cartridge or canister style filter. So you basically replace the element inside and then the gasket that goes around. This is a traditional oil filter that most people are used to. You basically just take it off and throw it out and that's it. This is for a different car. But with this, basically, what's different about the Corolla is you basically re replace this and this and you keep the outer housing that's designed to be reusable. So that's what's a little bit different if maybe you've never seen a cartridge or used a cartridge filter before. I'll just go over changing it. It's not that much different, but um, it is a slightly different procedure. You can't fill it or pre-fill it at all like you do with something like this. So um, Also, Toyota recommends if you do use a full synthetic or synthetic oil, you can do 10,000 mile oil change intervals if you don't meet any of the uh, severe duty criteria like excessive idling or a lot of stop and go very short trips things like that i do a lot of highway so i can qualify for that ten thousand mile uh, oil change interval so yeah it's really nice i'm not doing, having to do it every three thousand five thousand or even seventy five hundred so ten thousand is a pretty good uh, mark and even some manufacturers are making oils up to twenty thousand miles now or twenty five thousand miles now so um let's get started all right two tools you could really mainly need for this a 14 millimeter socket or wrench would work fine and specifically you need an adapter for the removable oil filter housing that you're going to reuse um, I like these best because they grab all the individual teeth so it has the most amount of contact points so it's least likely to break that it is plastic it is pretty durable but you do run the risk of breaking it if you use ones that have less prongs on them I've seen it happen um, some of the older Corollas, this is a 2015 specifically, but some of the older Corollas have a little metal tab here. You kind of have to hold out of the way when you do it. Just when you first get it started as like an anti-back off. They stopped doing that. I think they probably realized it was unnecessary. So you would put this on a ratchet like that. You can put extensions on it if need be, but it really doesn't need it. So let's go ahead and crack this thing loose. You want to make sure that the teeth mate up correctly. Sometimes it's easier to get everything to sit flush before you put the wrench on it. Sometimes it goes on nicely, sometimes it doesn't. Right now, apparently, it doesn't want to go on too nicely. So see, there we go. All right. So I just want to make sure it's basically sitting flat up against the black plastic. I like to use a long, larger one of these wrenches just because if you have it, it gives you a little bit more leverage. These things can tend to get pretty darn tight. Jesus. There we go. Oh, got a little tight this time. Oh, this is a lot of threads on it. You do need the, the wrench just to get it going. And you need the wrench pretty much to get it all the way off. So once it gets most of the way, it'll, then it'll start dripping on its own. Not a lot is going to come out of here, which you would get from pretty much every oil, taking every oil filter off. But you do need to be careful with when you take this off. The filter can fall out, so. And there we go. So this housing is going to get reused. I'll take it out, check it, clean it. It really doesn't need to be thoroughly cleaned, but... I also have to replace the gasket on it. So I usually will do this just because it's kind of hard to swing the wrench under here if you're already letting the uh, the sump drain. It's not a lot of room to swing the wrench when uh, the oil pan's under it, and not a lot comes out, and I have to prep this thing anyway, so it takes some time. So I'll just put it under here and let it sort of drain out. When I get it out, I'll let the rest of it drain. Usually there's a little bit left. I don't want to dump it all out because then the filter's going to end up sitting in there and get soaked with the rest of the oil from the car. So now that that's off, you will need the tool to put it back on. So definitely just put that to the side, leave it off, and then you got your 14 millimeter socket. That came off a little easier. Get 
this car says it. I think it, the manual says it takes 4.4 quarts. Definitely consult the owner's manual. But uh, you also want to check it. A 5-quart jug should do it. But uh, I think every car I've ever owned has taken a different amount than the owner's manual has said. Uh, also, before you crack everything loose, just check for leaks under here. Um, it's not a bad idea to replace the gasket on here if it is leaking. Some people replace them every oil change. I think it's unnecessary. They don't really leak that often. So if it's starting to look like it's leaking, go ahead and replace it. But you should be checking your car between oil changes just to make sure it's not burning or losing oil somehow. So we'll let this drain. I'll go up top and I'll show you how the uh, canister filter works. All right, old filter's out. This is what a filter with 10,000 miles looks on. It looks pretty good. Uh, what's nice about these is you don't have to cut them off. If you're somebody who likes to look at your filters and just kind of see what's going on in your engine, you don't have to cut the top off of it. You can look between the pleating and kind of see if there's any debris in there or any metal. So basically we're replacing this filter is garbage. This is getting thrown out. We will be reusing. This is the reusable piece. This is what the inside looks like. We reuse this. And then we also replace because any of the good kits will usually come with a new gasket. You can use just a screwdriver or any sort of dental pick I have to use for this just to get it off. It doesn't take a lot of effort. You just have to get underneath it and pull it off. And it just comes right off. So before you put the new one on, definitely inspect it. Make sure there's no damage or really any debris on it. It's also a good idea to put a little bit, just a dot of oil on it, even a little bit of the residual oil inside. Because as it goes on, it will sort of cut it in a way because once it squeezes up against it and it will go in with a lot more friction if there's no oil on it and you run the risk of it not seating correctly so I will usually these are pretty pliable so you can you can stretch them a little bit I also try to make sure it's not spun when it goes all the way on so inevitably it's gonna spin a little bit going past the threads just make sure that it's seated and there's no real twists in it so yeah, it went on okay there's, it's not twisted up or anything so it's nice and flush and it'll straighten out perfectly once you go to put it on. And then you just basically, there's no specific, most of these I don't believe are inner or outer specific. You can check the directions or what say on it if it is. So basically just push it on all the way and that's it. You cannot pre-fill these the way you do um, traditional style oil filters. So it basically has to go on dry like this. You can maybe try putting a little bit of oil on the pleating. I don't really think you're gonna get much, especially because it sits sideways. Any excess is gonna run right out. So this, I'll clean it a little bit of oil. It's up on the outside of this thing. This uh, O-ring has some good oil on it. So it should go in smoothly. We'll basically just uh, put it back on like that. The sump's almost done draining, so I'm almost ready to, uh, to put it back on. All right, the sump's almost done, so I'll just let it keep dripping a little bit from there. Uh, a little bit of oil dripping on the bottom of the housing. I'll just wipe that up. Then I got to do just to make sure the surface is nice and clean before it goes on. Really shouldn't be an issue with that because it's kept clean by the plastic housing. As with anything with threads on it, start tightening by hand. Make sure it's just seated all the way. It just rotates on. It should go on nice and smooth by hand. You always want to start threads by hand without a tool because it starts cross-threading. You're really not going to feel it until it's too late. I was having a hard time grabbing there, so I just turned it counterclockwise till the threads made it up. And it went a few turns before it started getting tight to the point where now I need the wrench for it. So it should go on nice and smooth now. Got to get the tool to mate up to the teeth. Once it finds it, it'll go. There we go. I think that was it. Get nice and flat. All right. Put the wrench back on. I don't know if there is a torque spec on this because there probably is. However, when it stops, it stops, and then that's it. It just basically sits flush. I'm sure you can over tighten it, but once you feel it, it usually stops pretty much dead and that's usually an indication that you're done so if you can get two hands on it you should just kind of hold the tool on because it can kind of slip off but it shouldn't have a lot of resistance going in once you can put a little bit of oil on that o-ring on the threads that's it and yeah the thing stops dead so that's pretty much it just snug not gorilla tight but snug 
they usually won't back off on their own so I'll let this thing drip for another minute or two and then I'll plug it up and then we'll go up top and we'll start filling it with oil so unfortunately I lost my audio after I finished the oil change I didn't realize the plug had come out just enough where the audio cut out but it wasn't obvious that the plug was undone. So I'll just explain everything I did. Whenever I do an oil change on this car, or every time I open the hood really, I always remove this engine cover. It's held on by rubber grommets. It doesn't take any tools to take it off. You have these grommets and the post it sits on, they're easy to come off. I, like I said, I take it off for two reasons. One, when you're putting oil in the car, if you spill any, it's gonna drain down here and then get onto the block. It's gonna smoke, it's gonna smell, it's going to make a mess. So it's just easier if you take that cover off to clean any spilled residual oil up very easily. Also, you want to take that off because any sort of debris that's outside or in the air, like leaves or really anything that falls off, a tr off of trees is going to accumulate here under this fuel rail. So you want to make sure that's nice and clean. So varnish or any sort of oils don't build up on the, on the fuel rail and potentially damage the seals for the injectors but also if stuff accumulates under there or animals potentially make a nest that can start a fire so you really want to be careful and make sure that that is completely clean um, with these cars having 10,000 mile intervals and some cars even more you do not want to go the entire oil change interval and only open the hood to change the oil you should be opening the hood on a regular basis and checking everything checking the oil level making sure everything is okay with a visual inspection if the car starts to burn oil, leak oil, you may not realize it because if you're not opening the hood on a regular basis to check it, it can run down quite a bit in 10,000 miles. You also want to check, just check all your fluids in general, make sure there's no obvious damage or sort of problems under here because you really should be opening your hood. I usually open it every week or two weeks, depend, as long as the weather's nice, I'll check everything, make sure everything's good just to catch any developing problems. So when you go to put oil in the car, one issue I have with these cars, for some reason, I don't know why the Corollas do it. This gasket will tend to stick to the top of the valve cover. So when I did the oil change before, it actually it did stick. And when I took the cap off, it stayed on the, the valve cover and didn't come with it. So I'll very carefully peel it off and put it back in here. I always do put a fresh bead of oil on here so it's less likely to stick. But unfortunately, uh, it does stick sometimes. So... I'll put the funnel on. I'll usually put four quarts in. It your car usually takes four, four, four point five, somewhere around there. I'll put four in. Then I'll put the cap back on and make absolutely sure whenever you run the car that the oil cap is on tight. If you run the car for even a second without the oil cap on, it's going to splatter oil everywhere and make an absolute mess. If you do it for more than a few seconds, it's really going to make a huge mess. So make sure even when you're you're running the engine just to refill the oil filter that the cap is on so i'll usually do about four give or take i'll run the engine for about 30 seconds making sure the oil pressure light goes off turn it off let it sit for a couple minutes and then slowly put more oil in you do not want to overfill these cars if you overfill it you're going to have to drain some back out so you're better off putting a little bit less in than too much do not overfill a car with oil you can do damage to the seals inside so another tip I recommend is these cars typically come with a maintenance schedule that comes with the owner's manual. It basically gives the intervals of when you need to be doing everything from oil changes, um, filters, fluid exchanges, things like that. I recommend following that. The engineers put a lot of time and effort into developing those. So I highly recommend just following the schedule, especially when the car is under warranty. Also, keep your receipts. You do not have to necessarily go back to the dealer to maintain the car. But if there is a problem, they will often ask for receipts to make sure that maintenance has been done correctly. And if you have the receipts to prove that, then they really can't dispute it. So whenever the car is under warranty, keep your receipts that you've been doing the maintenance yourself. So you can do that. Um, I'll go back in the car now and I'll explain how to reset the light because these Toyotas do have maintenance lights on them so the maintenance light is based off of mileage only it doesn't do any sort of oil analysis or anything every 4,500 miles at 4,500 miles the light will flash for the first 20 seconds or so of running the car and then it goes off at 5,000 miles the maintenance light stays on solid that's basically saying all right it's 
maintenance is definitely required. You have to do something because with this car specifically, the maintenance in the book is in 5,000 mileage intervals. So at 4,500, it gives you a little bit of a warning. And then at 5,000, it's time to get done. So what you want to do is, as far as resetting the maintenance light, the maintenance light is right there. In order to reset it, you have to set the trip odometer to trip A. Turn the ignition off completely. Now you have this display button on the right hand side. Press and hold this. Do not let it go. I'm going to turn the ignition back on without starting the car. See those lines are starting to dash. It's basically resetting it. It's timing itself and then all zeros pop up. That means that that 4,500 mile interval or 5,000 mile interval has been completely reset and it has gone back down to completely zero. You can then put the car back to whatever setting you have it on the odometer. doesn't matter at that point. But now your maintenance light will not go on and at another 4,500 miles it'll start to flash at 5,000 it stays on solid. So um, that's basically a Toyota Corolla oil change. And just make sure, like I said before, when you started the car for the first time, Make sure that that oil pressure light goes off within the first couple seconds. It does take another second or so more than normal just because it has to refill the filter housing, but it shouldn't take any more than an extra second or two. If it does, shut the car off so you do not do any damage to the engine. If you run the car with no oil pressure, you're going to destroy the engine. So just turn it off if that oil pressure light does not come on almost immediately. So that's basically the Toyota Corolla oil change uh, one other thing I do recommend is when I was under the car before doing the oil change, I do not remove any tools from underneath the car until everything underneath has been secured. So I remember that. If you take a tool out and you put it somewhere else, you may forget to tighten something. You forget to tighten the oil filter housing. You forget to tighten the, the drain on the sump. So that's just one tip I recommend. Just leave the tools under the car so when you do take them out, you know that everything is tight. If you're not sure, go back and double, triple tech check if you have to. It's not worth damaging the car or, or having a major problem and having to get the car towed because you forgot to, uh, to double check or double tighten something. So this is pretty straightforward oil change. Like most cars, the only real difference was that canister style filter that you had to, uh, to deal with. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward oil change. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.